there's real progress here. And it's pretty clear to anybody who's watching what the trajectory is. Trajectory is that they're, they are going to accomplish becoming safer than a human driver. It's just a matter of when. What I wanted to know from you is um, in the context of everything, of, of all the buzz we hear right now, do you think it's one of the most important topics right now surrounding Tesla? Because we all know the short sellers are popping up everywhere now uh, because Tesla is down so much. But uh, do you think it's something that is uh, correctly mapped, the, the, the mm -hmm. Tesla price target? Or do you think it's, it's mm -hmm. totally out of, the, out of the blue, more or less, um, in, in comparison with the surrounding technology and everything? Well, I definitely do think it's underappreciated. For a long time, Tesla's EV business was underappreciated. And yeah, people said, oh, well, EVs will never work. And <laughs> actually, a gas car is better. And oh, well, maybe we need hybrids. And people just didn't believe in the idea of battery electric cars. Now, with the Model 3 being successful, being profitable, becoming one of the best selling cars in the world, and the Model Y building off of that, people have started to realize, okay, there may be something to this electric car thing. And now you've seen everyone in the industry say, okay, we're going to make electric cars and get their own models out there. But in a way, electric is almost the least interesting part of Tesla now because everybody has accepted, okay, electric is the way to go. And they're, they're going to do the work to scale production and, and make that happen. And Uh, be able to make a, a lot more electric vehicles than anybody else probably. In 2022, Tesla was the number one largest producer of pure electric vehicles in the world again. Um, although BYD had some great growth, uh, Tesla came in number one again, same as last year. Um, the production story is just incredible, but really there's three parts to it. There's electrification, digitization, software eating the car, And software really becoming key to the experience of a car, whereas software didn't really matter before. In the future, software is going to be one of the key things that people look at when they pick a car because our cars are becoming like smart cars. They're becoming like smartphones, the same way we had a dumb phone before mm -hmm. and it was just used to make phone calls. And now we got this smartphone where we're running all these different apps, all this different software on it. That's essentially what's happening with the Tesla. You have the Tesla user interface, the ability to open your phone and pre-eat your car so you don't have to get in when it's cold and the ability to watch Netflix and YouTube and play games on your car. These Real games. Are become, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real yeah, games. Like, yeah. You know, Grand Theft Auto V on some of the <laughs> yeah, highest I've seen cars. That. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. You can really run pretty much any PC game. So these things will become more and more important as the cars become more and more autonomous. And it's kind of funny. People don't really believe in autonomous because people have been developing it for so long. You people feel that they're kind of a fool if they believe it's really coming. So they say, Oh, well, you know, it's 10 years away or something. But here in the United States, I've ridden in a driverless Waymo car, a driverless cruise car multiple times. It can be done safely with today's technology. There's real progress here, and it's pretty clear to anybody who's watching what the trajectory is. The trajectory is that they're, they are going to accomplish becoming safer than a human driver. It's just a matter of when. So this is obviously going to flip the table on the entire auto industry. People say, oh, it's never coming. It's never coming. But when it inevitably comes, it changes everything, right? And... It's not even, I mean, it's just the beginning. To really make the car drive itself, you're not making a car. You're making a human, okay? You're making the driver, right? So when you sell somebody a car, you're selling them that piece of metal that can drive around. And people think, oh, a self-driving car is just another type of car. But really what you're building is an artificial human, You're building a driver because you need to figure out how to build that intelligence that can figure out what's going on, what's the correct thing to do, what's safe. So it's very, very different. People who specialized in bending metal together before, they have no idea how to build an intelligence, how to build a driver. It's a completely different skill set. And as a matter of fact, many of these legacy OEMs, their culture is very ill-suited to it. So 
with Tesla FSD, they've really had to make some serious tech innovations, building things like the Dojo training supercomputer, the autopilot inference chip, which can run neural network inference very fast on the car so that you can use it for safety critical applications. And the tools they've developed for self-driving, it's really self-driving is really just sort of the beginning. You see what's happening in deep learning with models like chat GPT, where you can just say, hey, write me a story where this happens. And it can just write you a story like this or Dolly or Staple Diffusion, where you can say, hey, I want a picture of a cowboy surfing on a, you know, on Mars. <laughs> and it'll make you a picture of that just based on the words within less than a minute. Right. So amazing, amazing things are happening in AI where we can create software that can do things that we couldn't even imagine because it's a, it's a paradigm shift in software rather than writing the code ourselves, We have the computer watch us and learn from us and develop its own algorithms. So this is, these, this is some really breakthrough technology that's happening and Tesla's bringing it to transportation at a scale that nobody else can match. The fact that they're making so many cars that they have Giga Berlin now ramping up, Austin, Shanghai, Fremont, all making millions of cars. That's what allows them to gather data and train these systems to drive the car so well all over the world. So really you see Tesla's production expertise and Tesla's software expertise going hand in hand in developing this technology. And you know, I think people are seriously underestimating how transformative it can be. Of course, it's not a sure thing. There's always execution risks. But if it does work out, it's much bigger than the auto industry or energy even. We're talking about the very nature of work, right? What do I have to do in a world where machines can automate most of the tasks that we thought we needed humans for? Yeah, especially with, with like you said, the, the AI-driven um, software that's that's surrounding us i mean chat gpt that you mentioned is very powerful as well also for texting and everything for copywriting there are a lot of tools um besides chat gpt that are very powerful today that you must wonder if anybody <laughs> will write any text to the internet uh, coming in the coming years because it's so perfect sometimes right. um it's, it still needs needs training as as also tesla Tesla's full self-driving um, software, but um, if you compare it, for example, to Mercedes, because um, I've, I've looked at them as well, and, and many people say, oh, Mercedes is uh, developing FSD since uh, 2010 or something, or 2012, <laughs> or I don't, I don't know the number in my head right now, but uh, I really must laugh because I know how the Germans work, how the Germans uh, uh, do things, and um, especially here, the regulation is a huge problem, and um, It's it's hard for us to develop something here in Europe. It's 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 almost I would say like nearly impossible because regulators really need to be behind that. And in the US, it's more or less um, do what you want, more or less. But uh, <laughs> but uh, if yeah, some, we have very different yeah, regulatory attitudes. Ex exactly. And <laughs> uh, but if something happens, oh, you're gonna get sued and big time. And uh, that's <laughs> a little bit different here. Here you have to. Of, of course, in the U.S., you need your approvals as well, but they are loose in comparison to Germany. Yes. And yes. <laughs> you, you, you could see that in the opening of Giga Berlin, that it took a little bit more time. And, and I've, I've watched American uh, uh, content creators saying, oh, it took so long. But uh, <laughs> but I was like, uh, wait Germany, a second, it's, fast. it's super fast. We have an airport <laughs> that took six years or seven years to build. So uh, uh, you have to right. <laughs> hold hold the horses there a little bit. But but uh, yeah, if you compare uh, if you compare um, um, the the full self driving software from Tesla to um, Mercedes, I mean. Mercedes is so restricted for a reason. I mean, they can just drive um, like 30 miles per hour behind a car in like, yeah. okay. And I, they do that because they could do it a little bit more fast, but but w no. if you're at a construction site, it disengages. If it's if slow standing sun, it disengages. Uh, if if yeah. there is a sense of failure, it disengages, of course. And um, Andrew Kirkpathy had an interview with Lex Friedman. You've, you've, maybe you've seen that. I've, I've shared a mm -hmm. clip um, also on your, I think I responded to your tweet. Um, and he also said the, the, if you focus on one sensor, It's, you can really advance the sensor much more and uh, the reliability gets better and better um, if you 
um, yeah, if the software gets better and better. And then, I mean, you have to maintain all these sensors. That's crazy. So, yeah, maybe you have something yeah. on the competition or how you view the competition in that sense of full self-driving there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody else has a piece of software right now that can drive you from point to point without takeovers using just cameras. I mean, this is just crazy. People said it was impossible. And it's funny, you hear people say, oh, well, Mercedes has a level three system on the market. And people say, oh, well, it's level three. That must mean it's better. <laughs> and you really see that what they really have is marketing and yeah. not a lot of substance because their quote unquote level three system where you don't have to pay attention, supposedly, only works you know, 30 to 40 miles an hour on the freeway when you're in a traffic jam, as soon as the traffic speeds up, you have to take over again, right? Or, you know, it doesn't mean that, that it's necessarily perfect. You still have to sort of watch, you have construction, all these sort of things. It's, it doesn't mean that it's some sort of, you know, foolproof thing where they're never going to have an issue. And of course, autopilot already, if you're in a traffic jam, it works perfectly fine at handling that scenario. That's not a challenging scenario when you're <laughs> driving very slow in bumper to bumper traffic. So, you know, a lot of times people say, well, you know, why doesn't Tesla sort of talk about this, market it, whatever? And they'd sort of rather put a dollar into engineering and making the software better and just not tell anybody and let it spread the word of mouth. And maybe in the future, the time will come to market it. But Right now, it's just all purely engineering. Put every dollar into making it better. And so I think it's sort of uh, a little bit of a secret because it's not discussed in terms of advertising dollars and that sort of thing yet. But for people who really look, there's nothing else quite like what Tesla is doing out there. Nothing in the world. It's very unique. And this is very counterintuitive for people because... It seems like everybody and their mom is starting a self-driving car company, right? you got so <laughs> many, you can't even name them. But they're all using LiDAR, using the spatial approach, really leaning on the sensors to say, okay, there's something in front mm -hmm. of me. They're not really developing that understanding of the world that's generalizable. So like, for example, we have the cruise driverless service. You can use it from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. here, but only when it's not raining and it goes 25 miles an hour. So it's very limited. For example, it doesn't even go to my apartment. I have to walk a few blocks to get within the service area where I can call one. So you're seeing a very, very limited range of things. Whereas with autopilot, I can take it anywhere and I can ask it to try and do anything. It won't necessarily succeed at everything, but I can ask it to try and do anything that I could possibly do. And you have hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people giving it things to try every day. And this is the only way to prove that you're really reliable enough for self-driving. You must prove by demonstration, billions and billions of miles that you can do this successfully. There's no other way. There's no shortcut you can show in the lab. You actually have to go drive billions and billions of miles and say, look, we actually drove billions and billions of miles successfully. This proves it can be done. So that's a really important thing that's happening right now. And I can go take my autopilot onto the freeway. I was just doing a long drive the other day and I can tell it, I want you to go uh, 140 kilometers an hour, 87 miles an hour, and it'll go, it'll do it. And if the traffic stops suddenly, it'll stop. And for example, with the Waymo and cruise cars, they don't even work on the highway because they don't have the range on their LIDAR for highway driving. And even if they did, you're never going to see them go 140 kilometers an hour. But it's actually important to be able to drive 140 kilometers an hour. If you're on the Autobahn, for example, that's very critical. <laughs> mm. So it's not really appreciated that Tesla is doing things that nobody else is doing. And they sometimes get a lot of criticism because you can actually try it, right? Yep. So if you go to Google and you say, hey, can you give me your Google self-driving car? Let me go take it around and see how it does. You think they're going to let you do that? No, they've never let anybody do that, right? Why? Because 
it doesn't work. It only works yeah. in a very specifically pre-mapped area. They scan everything and they know exactly where everything is ahead of time. The Tesla is just looking with the camera and yeah. trying to figure it out. It's very, very different. 